Hey, what's up everybody? Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. So here's an update on the new studio. So this is the third time I've tried recording this and I always end up babbling too long. So I'm going to try to keep this as short as humanly possible. So quick overview of the space. It's a 12 by 16 shed. It's built on a concrete slab that is pretty much perfectly level and it was all insulated. The roof is vented. It's got uh, six 15 amp breakers, so it has dedicated electrical. There's no HVAC and there's no insulation in the roof, but other than that, construction-wise, it's pretty solid. So the main thing I needed to do was to get everything cleaned up. So the previous owner was using it as a workshop and a shed, so it was super grungy. The wall here, uh, where I've got all the artwork hanging up was completely banged up. Um, you can see some spots where you had some cabinets and then kind of painted around the cabinets and stuff. So when I got in here, there was just a, a lot of patching that needed to happen. And I only did that on two of the walls. So the one behind me here that's already painted and then the one where the windows are. My plan was to do a feature wall on that wall, but Turns out that's insanely expensive. I looked at some of the cheap options. I wanted to do brick. So brick and then hang my acoustic panels on it because I thought that would be a pretty cool backdrop for videos and stuff. Um, but the good stuff would probably run me two to three thousand uh, bucks. The cheap stuff, maybe four or five hundred bucks, but it looks really, really bad. And somewhere in the, uh, the middle of the road is doing it yourself. And I saw a couple of videos where they were showing how to do the most realistic brick wall for only $40, which uh, clickbait and a lot of nonsense. But you basically use tape and you use drywall plaster to create the texture. And then you use six different kinds of paint. You sit there with a sponge for 17 hours or whatever, and then you make it look as bricky as possible screw that <laughs> so i don't know what i'm going to do for that wall yet but construction wise all i really needed to do after i got things cleaned up was the floor so i put in dry core uh, subfloor down and then vinyl plank flooring on top because vinyl plank flooring is pretty much indestructible um, this has not leaked at all so we had a really bad thunderstorm for probably close to an hour last night nothing leaked in here, not even under the garage. So the garage isn't completely sealed, the, the roll-up garage door. What I'm gonna be doing in the future is replacing that with a patio door, so that's already on order. When I did the subfloor, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with the garage door. So one option was I wanted to leave myself space where I could just build a temporary wall to, to cover it and then use plastic for the winter time. And the other was if I stopped the floor where I did, if I want to extend the shed later, it'll be easier for me to build kind of a, a big long step up onto a deck or another structure if I build it out there. Uh, the patio door actually, um, that's gonna be fine because building a sill to cover that is, uh, is part of uh, the price anyway. So hopefully that won't be too bad. Uh, I might have to do a little bit of MacGyvering for that. And the other thing I needed to do was deal with the dip from the outside to the inside from the main entry door. So it's about a two inch drop. Previous owner just kind of MacGyvered a bunch of panels or like old trim pieces to seal it off, but uh, it definitely was not air sealed at all. Um, the door sweep was completely disgusting and most of it was kind of ripped apart and the, the 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 weather stripping around it I still haven't replaced but I'm gonna have to do that as well so I built a little door sill um, haven't finished the sub sill yet just because of the way that that area is set up there's a sloped concrete uh, piece that is kind of stuck in there so it's not like I can just get a regular I won't bore you with the details but I've got to figure out something else for that sub sill the goal now was just to keep critters out because there's a skunk that roams around here somewhere. Uh, the neighbor's dog, uh, they've got a husky German Shepherd mix. Uh, it's just gorgeous dog. Um, but it got, it got sprayed by the skunk a few nights ago. And uh, I saw it out here actually the first night we moved in. We've got some green plant ground cover just outside the shed. And as I was walking to the shed, I saw this little tail go up going, hello. I was like, no, thank you. And then I saw a gigantic... Maybe it was a rat. I was actually talking to the neighbors and they said a number of years ago they had rats. And I was like, what the hell? I've never seen rats in this area. Um, so it was either like a severely obese mouse or uh, a smallish rat.
the goal was keeping critters out first and then the sill should do that. I have to put some caulking around there to make sure that nothing gets in, but the whole porch outside is all covered. So water never usually gets on the porch any, anyway, even when that, that big rainstorm that we had last night. But I'm guessing when snow, when it starts snowing and snow starts blowing around, it's gonna build up. So I just wanna make sure that nothing is gonna leak out of there. So the only three things, well, I guess four things to do, uh, patch up that sill, get the um, roll up garage door replaced with the patio door, insulate upstairs, which I'm gonna do in the fall and then replace these halogen lights because they're super noisy. I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. It's great because it makes things nice and bright. And even with the lights off, the lighting on the camera wasn't too bad because I've got the window from the garage here and I've got the other exterior windows right here. So that's not that big of a deal, but let me turn these off. All right, so setting up the room, I used an app called Room Sketcher to sort of plan things out before I started moving stuff in here. And uh, I was keeping in mind that I need a multi-purpose space. So a place for the day job, a place for all the music stuff from songwriting to recording to mixing and mastering. And uh, if you saw the first video saying goodbye to the studio, the one thing I didn't like was not having a permanent space. So it always felt like I was setting things up or I was setting up microphones or I was moving guitars around because I didn't have a place to put everything. And uh, with that in mind, um, I've got the space basically set up uh, the way that I want. So I am gonna go back to electric drums and there's a perfect place right behind me for that. And I'm probably gonna go with F notes. I'd be more than happy to go with the Strike Pro again, but the footprint is a little bit too big. I want something that's a little compact. I don't want the drums to take up, you know, like a quarter of the room because I'm gonna need uh, space maybe for a sofa bed or a place where I can just kind of sit and relax and do songwriting without having to constantly be sitting in front of the computer. So, um, I looked at a whole bunch of different options and actually it was Justin from 65 Drums. I watched a lot of his videos on the comparison of all the different kits and pros and cons and things like that. And uh, the only challenge with the F notes is I won't be able to get to play them before I buy them because there's only one Canadian distributor. So I'm actually gonna have to buy them and then just hope I like them. But uh, I'll get into a review of that a little bit later. But as far as setting up the room, place for the drums, place to hang out and just kind of chill, watch movies, do songwriting, and then a place for the day job and a place for mixing and mastering. So the last thing I'll say about setting the room up is, I don't know if the slap delay is coming through. It's pretty slappy in here. Um, the ceiling is not treated, so I'm gonna have to treat the ceiling. I haven't put my acoustic panels up. I'm probably gonna put them on the wall behind me. Uh, with where the garage door is, um, that will be a patio door at some point. I don't have a squared off room, so I'm, I'm, gonna I'm gonna need to take some time to learn how the room listens. Now, uh, I could have set this up to be, th this is the one thing with the first studio. When I, when I was setting up the first studio, I was only thinking about a listening room. Um, and now I realize that the, the studio obviously needs to be a little bit more than that. So I've got some ideas for having some temporary acoustic panels that are either gonna be on wheels or on tracks or something so I can maybe kind of enclose the space a little bit and get a bit of a better listening experience. But uh, sound is gonna be bouncing around uh, a little bit here. So there's gonna be a bit of adjustment to that as well. But I think overall, um, it's a really good space, it's in really good shape. If you wanna see how the rest of the construction goes, remember to hit like and subscribe. And if you wanna see the impressions about the F-Note kit, um, like and subscribe as well, because I am 99% sure that is what I'm gonna go with. So thanks for checking the video out and I'll see you on the next one.